Here at Re-Evolution at the Passenger Terminal in Amsterdam, I'm talking to Christina Bu. She is the Secretary General of the EV Association. And you said uh, the amount of sales is going through the roof of electric car. How much is it uh, as a percentage of total cars? Well, so far this year, it's uh, more than 40% of new car sales are EVs in Norway. How many fully battery uh, operated? 22%. So the, the plug-in hybrid is actually coming up dramatically, right? Because it used to be only uh, uh, fully electric, but plug-in hybrid is now accelerating. Yeah, it has been for uh, for a few years, and uh, and that is because uh, people are waiting for the longer range cars that also are of bigger size. So until those are delivered in uh, bigger numbers, people tend to also you know look for the PHEVs. But uh, the demand is really high for fully electric. That's what people want. It's just that uh, the range is not there yet. Yeah, well, the cars are coming, but there it's. The demand is a lot, uh, lot higher than the offer right now. Yeah. And it's a huge country for, uh, you know, it's a huge country with huge distances. Number one car, electric car, what is it? Uh, that are sold. Uh, it's the the electric Golf. The electric Golf, uh, not the Tesla, not the Nissan Leaf, but the electric Golf, and that is a fully electric Golf. It's a fully electric Golf, and then it's the BMW i3 is second, and then we have Tesla on th third and fourth. But I think uh, the Nissan Leaf, uh, the new one. How is it doing? The new, uh, the new well, Nissan Leaf two, because everything was shipped almost to uh, to Norway. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, uh, I think that it will be a bestseller this year, and uh, the reason is, of course, that they can deliver the cars that the other. Uh, they had 6,500 contracts written before the car was even possible to test drive or, or look at, even look at. Uh, they are delivering, they started deliver deliveries a few weeks back and uh, they are going for it. So this will probably be the most, uh, most sold car this year. Most popular plug-in hybrid? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, no, it's uh, I know it's the Mitsubishi. Um, no, what's it? Uh, sorry, Outlander. Uh, the Outlander, yes. The Outlander. We call it the Foutlander, the faulty land, the faulty lander. But I mean, we're just our, we're our off our addiction. I mean, it went from I don't know 90% of sales to zero. Uh, are the uh, the taxation uh, incentives also now uh, true for plug-in hybrids, or are they uh, is the plug are the incentive much better for fully battery operated? They're definitely the best for BEVs, uh, and uh, the PH uh, the plug-in hybrids have some in incentives in the tax system, but they don't have the local incentives. So the only reason why the sales here are high is that people cannot get the the full electric uh, versions. Uh, really, you cannot. It's sold out. Well, long waiting lists for new models, yeah. used BEVs. Are sold immediately. Um, long waiting lists, for example the Hyundai Kona, the new SUV, uh, 18,000 Norwegians are in line to, in an interest line to, to buy that car. Yeah. Um, there are also long waiting lists on several of the existing models like the electric Golf for example. They Right now if you order it you have to wait for a year to get it. So and I think this is what is happening in Norway right now is probably going to be a challenge, challenge that is we will see for the next three and five. And that's three scary five years. because I mean, you know, you are a teeny peeny little country. You know, like four million people, and I think uh, hundred thousand cars are now fully electric cars are driving. It's only a small percentage, and the car industry cannot deliver. You know, how can we go to a re-evolution when this whole car industry isn't delivering? Do you see that they're changing from your perspective? Yeah, I, I think this is definitely going to be a big challenge the next next years because more and more markets are developing. Uh, the Netherlands is one country, but this is happening all over the world. The demand is raising. Yeah. So unless the OEMs, the car manufacturers, really get <laughs> to step the... Well, actually, what I, what, what I think will happen is that if they can't start delivering, yeah. then newcomers will come and take the market. That m may be Chinese uh, car manufacturers or other, other actors in the market. Have you seen already BYD uh, coming up and opening an office and start selling their first 10,000 fully electric cars? Well, no, but, but their buses are already, already in Oslo, um, and uh, there are, I don't, I think it's only a, a matter of time before they, they get here with their cars as well. Okay, charging. I mean, they, uh, the charging system of Norway was amazing. It was with little, you know, pieces of paper, and it was very, it was not very sophisticated compared to what we're used to here in the Netherlands. How, how are we now doing, and how is the capacity for the fast chargers and the, the parking places? Is there enough? I'm not talk, I don't know what you talk about paper. They used to well, they, they used to have an uh, the SF system with a, a little key which you had to open oh, yeah, up, and that the and they didn't have uh, they didn't have free level charging with free uh, charging. Uh, how how professional is the infrastructure now of charging in, in Norway? I think it's probably uh, one of the most professional uh, systems, especially when you look at fast charging. It's still a challenge on uh, normal charging in cities, uh, of course, but we are mostly using 
RFID tags to start charging or SMS. Uh, I, I personally, actually most users like the RFID tag. It's easy to just have it on your key and you go like this instead of having to write on your mobile phone in when it's snowing and cold. Um, and uh, yeah, we, are, have, we now have around uh, 600 uh, fast charging stations, but about uh, 1,300, uh, 1300 uh, fast charging points, so 1,300 cars fast charge at the same time. We have a, a system uh, all over the country with chargers apart from the far north um, and we're getting more and more chargers in the most populated areas. The challenge is of course that we are getting uh, queuing problems. Uh, we have the queues, yes, yeah. that's also that's a level of sophistication, so you have your queues. We have queues and this is becoming increasingly becoming a challenge. Uh, we need more chargers in the most populated areas and of course still not uh, very interesting economically to put up chargers in more remote locations. So that, uh, that is the challenge. Cha cha do people mostly, uh, do they have apartments or do, pe do the Norwegians mostly have their own houses where they can charge on, the, uh, on their own driveway? Well, um, in Oslo, uh, the capital, 70% live in apartment buildings. So, uh, but of course, around the, the country, a lot of people live uh, in detached houses, which is less of a problem. But we have to solve the city issue also, um, which is uh, also a challenge. And right now in Oslo, we have apartment buildings with 300 parking spaces that w they want to have chargers on all spaces. Because the people who don't have, haven't bought an electric car yet, they know that they will have problems selling their apartment in a few years if they don't have a charger there, right? Because more than 50% of new car sales in Oslo are EVs. Yeah. Okay, so all the, parking, so all, the, all the parking garages now are being filled up with, uh, slowly with uh, charges for, and, and everybody's onto it because, I mean, they have a self-interest. It started. We still have a long way to go. And, of course, there are big business opportunities here also. Um, I know that uh, there are several Dutch companies that are quite interested also in the Norwegian market. Uh, but, yes, this is an uh, accelerating market uh, possibility yeah. for your um, your EV association uh, what is the big uh, challenge I mean you talk to political uh, to polit politics and you talk to comp companies what is for you the next step well uh, the Norwegian Parliament has decided that we are only selling zero emission vehicles from 2025 in seven years uh, the big I thing that we are discussing now how are we going to make this happen the market demand is there but what about the cars and what about the charging and also we need to make sure that the incentives are in place long enough for m to make this happen so this is the political issues that we are pushing uh, and is there already people complaining that the incentives are too much and they should, should be going down well actually uh, we did a survey this January and we asked uh, when we asked the people who wants to buy a car this year 45 percent say they want to buy a BEV so we are getting to a situation where the majority of Norwegians are ready to buy an, an electric car. Therefore, they also support the incentives. Yeah. So it's not a big issue, actually. Okay. And all the politics, left and right, are still supporting it. Uh, what do you think is mostly going to be a problem? The right uh, level of EVs that are coming to the market or the, the charging uh, situation? I think in the short run, the the, the cars has to be delivered, but in a charging infrastructure is definitely one of the biggest challenges. Yeah. Yeah. You're engineers, you know how to solve that, right? I hope we will. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming to Amsterdam. Thank you.